Hi, let's talk about polars. So again, I'm Matt Harrison. I'm the author of Effective Pandas, Machine Learning Pocket Reference, and Illustrated Guide to Python 3, among other books. I'm an advisor to a company called Ponder that creates an enterprise version of pandas that lets you run pandas on your BigQuery or on uh, your Snowflake data sets. And I also do corporate training. So I teach people Python and teach people data science. So I'm excited to talk about polars today. Okay, quick history of polars or relevant background. So my background is I've worked with data since 1999. In 2006, I created my own OLAP engine in Python. Later, I heard about pandas and I started using pandas. In 2016, I wrote a book about pandas. 2019, did some Spark training. 2020, wrote the second edition of the Pandas Cookbook. In 2021, I wrote a book called Effective Pandas. And recently, I've done a bunch of training around QDF, Modin, and Polars as well. So I've got a bunch of opinions here, and I'm going to just walk you through a data set. And we're going to look at the data set and look at the types, talk about this thing called chaining. We'll talk about function application and app and, <clears throat> and we'll talk about aggregation as well. Okay, so let's run our data. Okay, so we're going to load our libraries here. I'm running Polar's version 0.17, and I'm going to download my data. This is vehicle data from the US government about cars and their mileage. So it looks something like this. We've got 41,000 rows and 83 columns. So we're going to look, and there's a bunch of columns in here. I'm not concerned with all of those, but our initial data size of this is like 33 megs. Okay, so I'm going to walk through this data set, and one of the things you want to do is get the types right. I'm going to use a subset of the columns here. So instead of all 83 columns, I'm just going to use this subset here. And you can see that we've got various types of columns in this Polar's data frame. If you're familiar with pandas, this looks pretty familiar. We've got int 64s, float 64s, UTF-8. And one thing to note is that Polar's does have a native stream type, which in pandas one wasn't the case. If we look at the size of this, we're looking at around eight megs for this. So what I'd do is I'd just go through this data. Let's pull out the integers. So I'll do something like this. I'm gonna say, pull out the columns I'm interested in and then select the columns that are in 64. So these are the columns that are in 64. We've got city mileage, combined mileage, highway mileage, cylinders, the fuel cost per year, the range, that's how far an electric car will go, and the year. I might want to do a describe on this, and this looks very similar to what we'd see in pandas. Here we get summary statistics of this. Now, one thing to note about polars is if you're familiar with pandas, pandas has an index. We don't have an index here. We just have column names, and we have a bunch of columns. Now, I wouldn't write this like this. I would write it like this second option here. It's the same code, but I put parentheses around it. And the parentheses allow us to uh, not worry about white space. So we, what I can do is put each operation on its own line. You can see that that gives me the same result. Now, one thing to be aware of is you, you can see the types for each of these. And I am probably don't need to use uh, a floating point, a 64-bit floating point for city mileage that goes up to, it looks like, 150. Combined mileage goes up to 136. So I could probably reduce these cylinders, goes up to 16. And I'm going to just see if I could use like an uh, int 8, an 8 bit integer. And you can see that that goes from like negative 128 to 127. There's also an unsigned 8 bit integer, which goes up to 255, which might be more appropriate. So I'm going to say, let's take my data frame, pull out the columns I want, and then we're going to use this with columns method. And we're going to try and convert the combined mileage to an int 8. And then we'll do a describe on that. When I do that, I get an error. And the error here says that this is strict conversion failed. We've got values like 130, 131, and that did not work. So instead of doing that with an int 8, let's try an unsigned integer 8. And it looks like that does indeed work. So this is kind of nice. 
Pandas 1 didn't check those types, it would just allow you to do those. Uh, we can use other types as well, so N16. So I might do something like this where I say, let's take the city mileage, the combined mileage, the highway mileage, the cylinders, and displacement, convert those to unsigned eights, and then range, fuel cost, and year, we'll convert that to unsigned 16-bit integers. And we'll look at the size, we're now down to about 5.8 megabytes just by doing those operations without losing any of our data. Okay, let's look at streams here. And I'm going to just select the string types. So again, you can see that we've got a native string type here. We've got drive, which appears to be categorical. We've got this engine description column, which looks like it's pseudo categorical. It's got a bunch of different entries in there and parentheses and commas, probably freeform text. Make looks categorical. Model is probably categorical. Tranny actually looks like it has two pieces of information, whether it's manual or automatic and the number of speeds. And then this created on actually looks like a date. So we'll look at these and try and deal with these. Okay, so let's just look at our size. Remember we have 5.8 megs and I'm going to convert drive, make, and model to categoricals and look at our size after that. We're down to four megs by doing that. So categorical is just a, string value that doesn't repeat itself a lot. That uh, looks pretty good. Um, let's look at the uh, um, FFS column here. I'm gonna look at these remaining ones. So I've got engine description that has FFS. We've got transmission, we wanna pull that into two, the manual and the, and the speeds, and then create it on. We'll deal with that when we talk about dates. So I'm just gonna make a column here. This is an expression, so I can pull up the documentation. And you can see that we have like off of a column expression, we have this STR and off of STR, we have various things that we can do. You can see that we can extract uh, values from that. So I'm gonna do a, an extraction here. I'm gonna say, let's extract. And then I'm using a raw string to say in parentheses backslash D plus that will match all the uh, numeric values inside of the transmission. And then I'm also, saying alias that as the speeds column. And then from that same tranny column, I'm gonna see whether it contains the manual string and alias that as the manual column. And it looks like that does indeed work if I do that. Okay, let's look at the columns after I do that. These are the columns that I have. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my code a little bit here. I'm going to use that columns I just printed out here and put it in the select method down below that to select those columns. Let's look at our estimated size. We're now down to 2.5 megabytes. Now we might be missing some values. So I'm gonna use a filter method here. I'm gonna say, where is drive null? Let's run that. And you can see here are the values where it's null. Looks like a lot of those are electric vehicles. So what am I gonna do here? I'm going to say, okay, in drive, fill null with other, that's it in this value right here, you can see this. And uh, we're also gonna say, and uh, put in engine description, you can see the engine description is whether we contain it in FFS. And, and so let's just run that and see if that works. So do we have a drive here? Uh, and it looks like drive worked there, it's not complaining. And we've got some missing cylinders as well. So let's just find out where those are missing. And it looks like those are electric vehicles as well. So I'm just gonna come in here and say cylinders. If we have missing values, fill those in with zero and cast that to a uint eight. And that looks like that works as well. Okay, let's look at our dates. Uh, to do this, I'm going to have to clean up this date column a little bit here. And I need to know about this re replace method here. So I'm going to use this replace method on created on. If I try and convert the dates, it's not going to like those EDT and EST. So I'm just going to replace those with the time zone offsets there. And then I'm going to call the stir stir p time to convert it to a date time and say UTC is equal to true. Um, you can see that created on now says that it is a date time. So that's pretty cool. If I want to convert this uh, to a New York City time zone. After I convert it to a date time, I can say DT convert time zone, and that looks like that works as well. Okay, at this point, uh, my data is looking pretty good. I'm gonna convert this into a function here, and here is my function. 
So one of the things I like to do is work with the raw data. Here you can see that I've chained up my operations starting from autos and then doing all these operations. As I've been creating these, I've been checking them to see that it works along the way. This is my recommended way and the Polar's recommended way. We call this chaining and it's also called flow programming. And you can see how I created this chain as I was going through. Now, one of the things that Polar's gives us that Pandas doesn't give us is Polar's gives us the ability to be lazy and it actually has a query engine that will optimize what's going on there. So here I'm saying make a function called tweak autos lazy. It's actually taking in a path. This is a path to the file. And then you can see I'm saying scan CSV and then I'm saying lazy. And then down here I'm saying collect. So what this is going to do is it's not going to execute anything until I run collect. And then it's going to look at the columns that I use down here, and it's only going to read from the CSV the columns that I specified down here. So even though there are 83 columns, it's not going to read everything. And it can do other things like predicate pushdown, etc. But you can run this and see that it does work. So this is one of the reasons you'll want to chain with Polars, because it can actually make your queries run faster when you do that. Now, a lot of people say this isn't easy to debug. I disagree with that. I mean, if I want to debug this, I can. I can stick in a pipe here. Pipe allows you to take the current state of the data frame and just return whatever you want. So here I'm just printing out the shape and then returning the data frame using a short circuit. You can see that I'm doing that before this operation. I'm doing that down here and I'm doing this at the end. So I should be able to see how big each of these are. I'm also piping in the git var here. If you want the intermediate state, this is just using the globals from Python to make a variable called df2 with the intermediate state right there. Let's run that and see what happens. Okay, you can see that we printed out the size as we've been going through here. And if we check df2, this is that intermediate state if we wanted to. So I don't think that chaining is necessarily hard to debug. It's just something that as you're building up your code, you will debug it as you're going. And then if you put it into a function, that makes it really easy to use. Now, another thing you want to be aware of is function application. So I'm going to make this variable called autos2, which is our cleaned up data set. And this is, again, pretty US centric here. Let's try and convert this to liters per 100 kilometers here. And we could do this by saying apply on that column. And that looks like that is working. Our city is converted to liters per 100 kilometers here. However, we can get the same result by doing this instead, by just saying 235 divided by that column. Now, when you're doing function application, you need to be aware that that can be a slow process because what you're doing is you're taking your data out of the backing store. In the case of Polars, it's using uh, the arrow, it has a Rust implementation of the arrow memory representation of this, and you're crossing that boundary, converting each individual value to a Python value, running the function and sticking it back in. So um, you can see that this took, in this case, four milliseconds to run the slow code and one point or 150 microseconds to run the fast code. Uh, the last time I run this was a similar order of magnitude there, almost 300 times slower to do the function application. So just be aware of that. You're gonna want to stay away from that function application if you can. Okay, another thing you'll want to do is master this thing called aggregation. And that's like a pivot table or a grouping if you're familiar with Excel or SQL. And so here we go, we're gonna say, let's get the mean by year. And what you wanna do is group by the year column. And then we can do the mean of that. You can see this makes a column called year that has each year. And then for each value, we have the numeric value for that. This is super powerful and it's basically one line of code, but I've written it as this chain. Now, one of the things I do like to do is visualize that. So I'm gonna uh, load some plotting code here. Now, another way to do this, if I don't want to get the mean of everything, I can specify the columns that I want using this ag method here. So here I'm saying, pull off the combined mileage column and the speeds column and take the mean of both of those. Now, one of the things that Polars doesn't give you that Pandas does is the ability to plot. So if I want to plot this, I'm generally gonna stick it back into Pandas. So here I call two Pandas, which actually gives me a data frame. And 
because I don't have an index there, I'm going to stick the year into the index and then I'm gonna call plot on that. And when I do this, the plot is kind of ugly. The issue here is that if you look at the data, the index is not sorted because of the optimizations that Polars makes. It tries to run as fast as possible. So I'm gonna just stick in a pandas sort index there and you can see that we get a pretty plot coming out of this, allowing us to quickly see around the year 2010 or so, the combined mileage shot up quite a bit for the average value there. Okay, here I'm going to group by year and I'm going to, instead of taking the mean, I'm going to take the standard deviation. So once you've got these figured out, it's really easy to change mean for standard deviation or for other operations that you might want to do. Now, in this case, I'm going to try and add a country. And so uh, we might want to know about this win operation and um, we're going to use the is in uh, method on a column as well. So here I'm going to try and add a country column and I'm going to say with column, then I'm going to say PL win. This is how you do an if statement. And we're going to say, take that make column. And if it's in Chevy, Ford, Dodge, GMC, or Tesla, then I want a value of US. Otherwise I want a value of other and we're going to call that country. And when I run this, I get an error. And the error is, is that it didn't like that I used a categorical and did this on a categorical. So to get around this, I'm going to actually cast this back to UTF-8 and run this. I should get um, a country column now. And then I'm going to say group by. We're going to group by both year and country. And then we're going to aggregate that. And here's the aggregation for that. Now, in this case, if I wanted to plot this by year, I would have to basically pull out that country. And I could do that in pandas, but uh, if I wanted to do that in polars, I actually want to use what's called a pivot to do that. So here I'm going to say, uh, let's make our column, our country column, and then we're gonna call pivot. We're going to stick a year into the index, even though polars doesn't have an index. When we say pivot, we can specify what we want in the year. And here we're gonna say the values are the combined mileage and the speeds and the columns is the country column and uh, we're gonna aggregate that with the mean function. So this columns here is gonna take the values of country and stick them up into the columns. Let me just maybe run this for you by commenting out these other values so you can see what's going on here. And then we'll just step through the chain. Okay, so this is the result that we get from doing this and um, then if we convert this to pandas, it looks pretty similar. We need an index here. So I'm gonna stick the year into the index. Uh, it looks semi-sorted, but it's not. So we're gonna sort it. And then we'll call a plot on this. That looks pretty good, but the legend's in the middle. So we'll just stick the legend off onto this side there. Okay, so this lets us look and see that, you know, around uh, 2008 or so, we did see a bump up in the combined mileage. Also, it looks like speeds is uh, has an upward trend or bend at that point as well. Okay, so we've looked at the Polar's library. A couple things to note about this. Uh, if you change your types, the correct types will allow you to save space, which can allow you to load more data and run things at a quicker clip. Chaining operations is going to make your code more readable. It's going to make it look like a recipe of operations. I also think it removes bugs and makes it easier to debug. Uh, unlike pandas, pandas I recommend chaining as well, but pullers you actually get an additional benefit from chaining because it does have a query planner and it can do things like predicate pushdown, etc. So you will want to chain in pullers to make the most of it. And then remember that that function application is slow for math operations. You want to try and avoid crossing that, what I would call the rest to Python boundary there. And aggregations are super powerful. If you're not familiar with them, play around with them. Once you get down the pattern of them, they're gonna be super powerful and help you answer a lot of questions that you might have. And then I do like to visualize. Polars does not have visualization, so I'm gonna jump back to Pandas to visualize that. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this quick introduction to Polars. It's a super powerful library and progressing fast. It has a lot of uh, capabilities and is 
a lot faster than pandas for a lot of operations. So check this out if, if you need an, uh, an option for pandas. Pandas isn't working for you. Polars, I think, is in a great place. If you're interested in more content like this, you can follow me on Twitter, Dunder M. Harrison, where I talk a lot about Python and data science. Have a great rest of your day and enjoy the conference. Thanks, everyone.